Hi. Hey, hello. Today, it's the 27th of September. There is less than 24 hours until Genshin Impact release. I've only slept two and a half hours uh, and I've just finished preloading Genshin Impact. Yes, I am suffering from still not being able to play Genshin Impact. Itis. So, welcome to my Genshin Impact reroll meta guide. I like to teach a man how to fish so he can go fishing. And that's why I am focusing on the meta of the reroll rather than the reroll itself. And there are plenty of reroll guides anyway. You don't need another one. <laughs> in case you're looking for one, I will drop one in the description below. So, what am I going to cover today? There are those of you that will be playing a gacha for the first time. There are those of you who have ventured many gachas and are coming to look for some reroll information. And then there are those of you who got unlucky and just stumbled upon this video. You poor children. So, today I will be covering what is rerolling? Gacha vets, you guys can skip ahead because uh, you guys already know the hell it is. Reroll considerations, including a quick summary of the reroll itself. This is probably the most important part and will help you make your decisions in terms of should I reroll and what do I reroll for? Which are actually the next two sections. Yeah. yeah. Timestamps below, let's just get into it. Ooh, actually. If you're a PS4 player, I am so sorry, but you guys can't reroll. Unless you want to make a new PSN account every single time. I am sorry to disappoint you guys, but you guys get the cool exclusive wings, so... So, what is rerolling? Rerolling is when you reset the game over and over until you get the desired start you want. Imagine if upon starting a game, you had you were presented with the choices of a sword, a shield, and a staff, but the one that you got was random. So if I was a diehard sword fan, and I went up and I was randomly assigned a shield, I'd be like, delete my save progress and restart to try to get the sword again because defense is for pussies. In gacha games you usually have to roll for something on banners. It could be for characters, it could be for weapons. In Genshin Impact it's both. <laughs> it's kind of like lottery tickets and the grand prize is a 2D waifu. No, this is a 3D game. So the information about the current banners that I'm using in this guide are probably going to be outdated pretty quick uh, just because banners uh, rotate really fast, so but the philosophies should still apply. Units and weapons in this game and most gacha games are rated by their rarities in the form of stars. For Genshin, uh, units go from 4 stars to 5 stars and weapons go from 3 to 5 stars. Higher stars means higher rarity, but that does not necessarily mean that they are better, though usually they are. This is usually in the form of extra stats or higher level caps or better skills, etc. I think for Genshin, uh, it's slightly better base stats. Correct me if I'm wrong though. Uh, for example, uh, Fischl uh, is apparently out damaging a bunch of 5 stars in the current Chinese open beta. So you never know. Alright, let's talk banners. So in Genshin Impact, we have three banners on launch. You have the beginner banner, Venti's banner, and the standard banner. For all of the banners, the chance of you getting a 5 star is at 0.6%, period. So this means that every time you roll, you will have a 0.6% chance of hitting that 5 star, or a 5 star. I'm not going to go into the details of is it 0.6% or 1.6% or what are the real rates accounting for other statistical measurements and stuff. So we're just going to work with 0.6%. The beginner banner, you can actually pull on it 20 times maximum. In the first 10 rolls, you'll be guaranteed a 4-star Geo unit called Noel. However, what makes the beginner banner so good to reroll on is because you can't get spooked by a 4-star or a 5-star weapon on it. So if you hit a 4-star or a 5-star, it will be guaranteed a character. With that being said, 3-star weapons are still in and they are common. Very, very common. Next is the standard banner. It's garbage. I wish I could just leave it like that, but let me explain why it's garbage. It's the same rate at a 0.6% for a 5 star, however it is split in between 5 star weapons and characters, So, and there are no rate ups for anything. It's kind of like you're just going for whatever, right? And then you have Venti's banner, so Venti is a character, uh, probably this side, <laughs> which gives you a rate up for a specific 5 star character, Venti. So these are what we call the promotional banners or like the limited banners or the rate up banners, right? So what this means is that if you roll a 5 star, there is a 50% chance that it will be venti. To roll on the beginner banner and the standard banner, you would use the blue acquainted fates. For rate up and promotional banners, you would use the white intertwined fates. There is a pity system, and what that means is that within the first 90 rolls, you will be guaranteed a 5 star 
with it being a 50% chance of being venti. If you don't get venti in these first 90 rolls and you roll another 90, so you're at a total of 180, you 100% get venti. And this probably is going to apply for the next limited banners too. You will only get the promotional unit on the 180th roll if you have not pulled him at all in the first 179. And based on the latest information, and correct me if I'm wrong anyone, but and I wish I was wrong, but Pity does not carry in between banners, which means that you need to do all 90 or 180 rolls in the same banner. So that means that you have to save up all of that and dump it in one go. Also, last of all, there is another Pity mechanic on 4 stars. So every 10 rolls, you will get a guaranteed 4 star unit or weapon. With this in mind, let me give you a quick summary of the reroll process. So right now, the optimal runs are about 16 minutes long to hit AR5, so that's your account rank, which enables you to get about, I think it's 10 to 12 to maybe 14 rolls if you really get together all the scraps, right? And about 27 minutes to hit AR7, which will enable you to get 30 to 32 rolls, depending on if you want to grab those scraps or not again. I personally prefer the AR7 method because it's more efficient in terms of how many rolls you get per minute, but also because remember I said that the beginner banner was the most, the best banner to roll on, and you can only roll, and you can roll 20 on the beginner banner. If you went AR5, you could only roll it, what, like 10, 12 times, but if you roll, if, if you get to AR7, you can roll 20 times into the beginner banner and 10 times into the Venti, Venti banner. The catch is that... AR5 is a lot more brain dead than AR7. I'm pretty sure you just follow the story and you'll hit AR5 within, let's say, 17 minutes or so. AR7 requires you to actually finish the story, but also do a couple of side things and maybe a couple of dungeons, uh, as shown on this video here from Key Lime Pie. Uh, you can see the list. Uh, I, I really recommend you check out his video. 20, under 26 minutes, that's like chef's kiss, you know. Here's some other considerations for whether you should reroll or not. Free to play income. We're expecting about 30 rolls a month based on things like dailies, abyss rewards, etc. There may be more from events. Maybe. Balance changes. This is quite an important factor because of Mihoyo's willingness to balance characters. So there are a couple of characters that have been changed from CBT to OBT where a couple of them got nerfed, a couple of them got buffed, and obviously as the game grows, what you re-rolled for now may lose effectiveness. And also power creep. So what that means is that units or weapons that are released today may not be able to keep up with units or weapons released in six months or a year's time. Barbara. <laughs> As of today, we've been notified that we will be getting Barbara if we hit AR 20 before patch 1.1, which is at least after October 5th. And that's really good because um, AR20, you should be able to hit it in a couple of days, uh, even playing as a casual. Barbara is a really cute water healer, um, so if you want her, you don't have to reroll for her now. But you could also reroll for her to get her constellations. Which brings me to my next point, constellations. To fully unlock a character's full potential, you need seven copies of them. Seven is the magic number. Seven elements, seven unlocks. Why seven? <laughs> One for the base and six levels of constellation. That's that's a lot. Progress. This is a PvE game, guys, and a predominantly single player game at that. You progress at your own rate. Everyone is gonna hit the same content wall eventually. I may hit it a day after because I re-rolled. I may or may not be re-rolling, but <laughs> like, who cares? So this is a plus for re-rolling. It's there there is a very defined content wall and it's not like you're going to lose overly much for being a day late or two days late or even three days late but get ready for the road event so some of you have been doing this event i know i have been the things that you can get from this event they're let me, let me show you something all right all right you see this shit? so he's looting now and you see that purple watch right there that's a four star right what you also see is did you see that gladiator uh gladiator's longing there on the left hand side that is a five star 
and there's so many other like purple drops as well. What I'm trying to say is that those accessories, those weapons, those four stars, they are relatively easy to get in the game as you progress. Five star units at a 0.6% drop rate? Not really. In the long run, it's probably better to hit a five star. This kind of brings me to my next point, which is preparation time. So there is a little bit of preparation that may be required when you want to reroll. So you might have to prepare a whole bunch of emails, like, but it's just a small minor time commitment, but it's, yeah, it's up to you what you want to do. Next thing is what exactly do you want out of this game? There are a lot of people that are going to be coming in that are thinking it's ju it's just a single player game. They're just going to do one playthrough and so be it. It's a nice free AAA game that has killed some time. Some other people are going to come and probably uh, find a waifu and uh, yeah, there are going to be collectors. There are going to be hardcore players. There are going to be, do you care about optimal progression? It's about like your goals with the game. My goals are probably very different to what your goals are going to be. And perhaps an equally important question, how much are you willing to spend? In Genshin Impact, to guarantee a unit from the promotional banner, you need 180 rolls. To ensure pity, yes, I am taking the pessimistic scenario because RNG. 180 rolls costs a shitload of money, several hundreds, right? And that's just to get one copy of them. Remember, if you want to max a character, you want seven of them. And the last consideration is bans. Let me show you something. You see this one here? What is Mihoyo's stance on rerolling? Blah, 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 blah. You can read it yourself, right? I think there is not a problem. There was a little bit of scare and fear mongering because there were quite a fair people that were getting banned in the Chinese open beta. I've went around and asked a couple of Chinese open play beta players that have re-rolled and they have not gotten banned. If you were going to get banned, you would get banned quite early on. But Mihoyo, it seems they are targeting the account sellers, those massive studios that have dedicated time and effort into building scripts and macros to, uh, to, to roll like top tier accounts and then sell them off, right? So whilst yes, there is a risk of being banned. I would take that risk, to be honest. <laughs> I think re-rolling is gonna be fine. And on the point of re-rolling, there was a streamer that said, you know, uh, they're not gonna re-roll because it's gonna cut into Mihoyo's profits and stuff. But there are actually a lot of players like myself. If I don't get my perfect re-roll, I'm not gonna play the game. <laughs> so if I get my re-roll, you bet I'm gonna drop cash on the game. So, dun dun dun, should I re-roll? Well, should you re-roll? And to this question, I have the answers. If you want to treat this as a free AAA game, finish it, drop it, come back maybe when there's new updates, etc. I probably would not recommend re-rolling. It's just a long, arduous process which could ruin your game experience and your fun and enjoyment levels because uh, it would cause you to burn out. I'm relatively confident that you can clear the game with the characters that were given, I think. So if you like start at launch, I'm pretty sure you get about seven free characters in total. And you will also get a natural flow of free income as well. So it's not like you can't pull it all. If you have one character that you really like and you can't go without, then you could reroll. You could, but you could also just save 180 pulls and just wait for the banner to come along and roll on it to get them guaranteed. If the banners come, which I'm pretty confident that they will. If you have several characters that are part of your dream team and they're they're all high rarity, like five stars, I probably would suggest you to reroll. I'm kind of in this camp. I have a few, not everyone, like I have a couple of five star rarities that I really want, uh, but I'm not willing to wail for them. <laughs> I'm willing to spend on the monthly, which will give about maybe 18 to 19 uh, extra rolls on top of the about 30 we get for being free to play. And we'll probably get the battle pass at least in the first month or two and that will give us an extra about five four or five rolls if you really want to hit those six constellation levels whether it be for a single character or a bunch of characters i would recommend re-rolling you've got a very long journey ahead of you young person unless you're a whale if you're a whale, please sponsor me and my upcoming videos. Also, I wouldn't recommend re-rolling for whales, since you'd probably make more money in the time that it takes for uh, for you to hit a character than you'd save by re-rolling. 
if you for the most part like f a lot of the four stars you could re-roll because it's relatively easy to get them at a rate of i think it's 5.4 percent and combined with the four star pity you would probably be the f a couple of the first people to finish re-rolling with that being said though again with this four star pity system for 10 rolls you're probably going to end up getting who you want eventually anyway so uh this is probably a you don't really need to re-roll to be honest if you want the utmost best start, min, max, pro gamer, razor, fortnite, whatever, then you're probably going to want to reroll. In this scenario, you could actually even consider a 5 star weapon, right, if you're trying to min max. Because I think that the weapons might have, the weapons are going to have a major impact on your team. The effects, the skills, and the scaling, it's just, it's quite strong, like there's like, look at that. Look at this bad boy. Bruh. Bruh, that's a poggers right there. Look at this bad boy. My god, like... That's some dank shit. And I think there is a leaderboard for Abyss, which is kind of like your tower system. But then again, if you're going to try hard, you probably don't need to be watching this video and just prepare your emails to reroll because you're probably going to do it anyway. If you're not sure, I would recommend against re-rolling. And that's because the re-rolling process, in particular, the time it takes, combined with the exceptionally low rates, like 0.6%, like, yikes. You're gonna be re-rolling for a long time. From a fun point of view, it's not really fun, bro. Though, to be honest, for some of us, re-rolling is half the game. <laughs> and finally, my real answer, I would hope that you would take all the facts that I talked about in the previous section and make your own decision. Teach a man a fish, you know? Alright, so you've decided that you do want to reroll and join me in gacha reroll hell. God. Who should you reroll for? There are a couple of ways to approach this, right? So you can reroll until you get your target 4 star. Pretty straightforward and probably the shortest one. You can reroll until you get any 5 star. Probably the most efficient way of using the reroll time, in my opinion. I am probably going to fall into this camp uh, depending on who I get and how I'm feeling at the moment. You can reroll until you get your target 5 star. I'm probably going to recommend against this because it's. Everything put together, it's, it's really rough. It's really rough, you know? Rerolling until you get at least 2 stars. You're a maniac. And if you actually do this and it succeed, DM me because I want to see that shit. <laughs> but I know that you're going to be here looking for a tier list. And I can't give you one because it's not really fair. I can't recommend any that I completely agree with. It would probably actually take me another like video or two or another 4,000 words to actually go through an in-depth analysis of each character and their archetypes and how well they perform in them. A lot of the tier lists right now are the geared towards a particular type of content, right? But there is so much to do in this game. So an S tier for exploration, for example, would probably not be an S tier for uh, Abyss, right? Somebody with a heal like Jean uh, probably is higher priority in Abyss because of the restrictions. And just because Venti's good at sucking shit up, it, it doesn't mean that he's good at exploration, right? He might be, or he is, because he's wind and not, that was a bad example, but you get what I mean. Generally speaking, most if not all of the characters, 4 and 5 stars, I think that they're all going to be extremely relevant except for Amber. I personally think that because of Mihoyo's willingness to balance, or maybe it was just an OBT thing, I don't know, you should probably pick based on maybe your aesthetic and your playstyle. Have a look at the wikis, watch some videos, and you'll notice that some characters, a lot of the characters are actually really unique. For example, you have Beto. She is the only character with a block and a counter. Uh, Amber has bombs. There are five different weapon types. You might not like one of them, right? I personally pro am not feeling bows right now. And honestly, at this point of the game, I really don't think you can go wrong with anyone. Again, except for Amber. And my only real tip for when you actually get into the game is to hit AR12 because that's when you can start doing dailies. Because who doesn't love their good old dailies? <sighs> so that kind of brings me to the end of my video. I hope you've learned a bit about the uh, meta around rerolling. It's it's, it's uh, maybe I'm making it more complicated than it needs to be, but 
there is just so much misinformation going on and there is just there are just so many people that are like no you shouldn't re-roll man you can just clear the game with the the characters that they give you like bruh i'm not even playing the game to clear the game i'm playing it to collect my wife who's like don't tell me how to play my game right and it's for people like me that i made this guide for to give you guys confidence that yes there are probably a small minority of us that are re-rolling not me i didn't say i'm re-rolling i really want to play this game bro so that brings us to the end of the video if you blah 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 you already know what to do man appreciate it and so i will catch you in the next video stay healthy and sit up oh god bye bye